Lionel is one of the most famous model train companies in the U.S. and has been since the early 1900s. This reputation was built on the printed pages of catalogs, flyers, and newspaper ads. The Lionel catalog is an idea as famous as the trains artistically represented within them. This video will explore how Joshua Lionel Cohen built Lionel through advertisement, how the catalog became an icon of the company, and how Lionel's methodology of advertisement has changed over the years. This is the history of Lionel's catalogs and advertisement. By the late 1800s, catalogs had become the primary method of advertisement for major companies. Catalogs such as the one published by Sears would become a staple of the time period and an iconic part of American culture. This method of advertising through well-illustrated magazines would make its way through many industries, including the toy train industry. Companies like Marklin, Carlyle, and Finch and Bing first began to advertise toy trains in the 1890s, along with many other products. By the time the Lionel Manufacturing Co. was producing toy trains at 24 Murray Street in 1901, catalogs had already become a well-used format for toy train companies. Lionel would print its first catalog in 1900, and the first catalog to feature toy trains was printed in 1901. These early catalogs were not much more than pamphlets, featuring small black and white illustrations of the products, and mostly focused on presenting the items through text. Lionel also often cataloged their products through large generic catalogs which contained products by many other companies. By the end of the 2 and 7 8th gauge production, the catalog had expanded to include a variety of products, but the best was yet to come. The 1906 catalog demonstrated a big change for Lionel. The cover of this catalog highlights Lionel's shift away from the 2 rail 2 and 7 8th gauge line towards the new 3 rail standard gauge line. This catalog featured a whole line of new products including trolleys, steam engines, freight, and passenger cars. Lionel was beginning to truly assert themselves as a major player in the toy train market. They boldly labeled their new track gauge as standard gauge, despite being the only company to use the gauge. Joshua Lionel Cohen was a great inventor, but an even better salesman. Lionel trademarked their standard gauge name, as well as the standard of the world slogan. Lionel immediately gained a leg up in the market. Joshua Lionel Cohen also worked to make the Lionel train name synonymous with the Christmas season. Christmas time was Lionel's biggest sale period, and Cowan understood this. It's because of him that the tradition of a train around a Christmas tree emerged. Lionel continued to produce new catalogs to highlight their emerging standard gauge line, but these catalogs were just beginning to take form. They were starkly different from what was to come. First, they were printed in only one or two colors, and they also featured no sets or outfits. Each item was shown and sold independently of one another. Lionel's catalog covers were relatively plain, featuring text and a few products, until 1914, which depicts a complete toy train layout with engines, cars, and accessories. This catalog cover is interesting as in addition to Lionel products, it depicts products from other companies, such as the Ives 114 station, Red Seal batteries, Whedon machine shop, and various German accessories. In 1915, Lionel added its new O-Gage line in order to compete with other toy train companies for a market share of lower end and expensive toy trains. 1915 would also be the first year Lionel began to offer sets of locomotives, cars, and track. These were called outfits and allowed buyers to get everything they needed in one package. With the U.S. entry into World War I in 1917, Lionel quickly capitalized on the marketing opportunity by releasing the number 214, a set complete with armored locomotive and two ammunition boxcars. Following World War I, Lionel emerged as rising competition to market leader Ives. Lionel couldn't beat Ives when it came to the quality of their toy trains, as for the most part, Ives' trains were better detailed and more realistic than Lionel's. Joshua Lionel Cowan took up an aggressive advertising campaign to knock Ives out of its lead in the toy train market. Lionel published ads portraying the supposed poor quality of Ives' models. One famous depiction includes both a Lionel and an Ives model crashing to the floor. While the Ives cast iron locomotive is drawn broken into many pieces, the Lionel sheet steel engine is in almost perfect condition. Lionel's criticism of Ives in these advertisements was ruthless and somewhat shady, as Lionel often faced their best products against Ives' cheapest. Despite Ives' superior product line, they could not hold against the onslaught of Lionel advertisement. Lionel's move introducing their standard gauge line and adopting their standard of the world slogan paid off. By 1921, Ives adopted standard gauge for their own trains, but they, and others, had to refer to it as wide gauge as the standard gauge name was trademarked by Lionel Corporation. Lionel continued to gain prominence and by 1924, Lionel overtook Ives to become the largest producer of toy trains in the United States. Toy trains entered their golden age in the 1920s, and Lionel quickly expanded their catalog and marketing strategies. In 1921, Lionel would hire Arthur Raphael to help direct and manage Lionel's sales and advertisement. Lionel became revolutionary in its advertising techniques. Catalogs were not the only method the company used to showcase its products. Lionel began to print ads in newspapers and flyers, as well as being one of the first to directly target the interest of children by making appealing images of Lionel trains and comics. In the early 1920s, Lionel showcased an image of a young boy on catalogs and boxes, with one hand on the controller and another on the top of the line number 42 locomotive. In 1924, Lionel began to completely revamp their line, and the 1924 catalog introduced this to the world with a full-color cover showing a small dog race in the brand new Lionel 40TE. These new Lionel products ushered in the golden age of standard gauge. The new 402 was an impressive recreation of the New York Central's S1 electric locomotive. Much more realistic and detailed than the aging 42, it featured two motors, improved shaping, and lots of detailed metal trim. As the 20s rolled on, the nation and Lionel continued to experience prosperity. 
Each year, the new Lionel catalog featured iconic covers, pages filled with beautifully drawn colorful new trains. Lionel seemed unstoppable. In 1928, Lionel and its competitor, American Flyer, would acquire Ives, operating it jointly. Lionel would acquire full ownership of Ives two years later. Last year of the Roaring Decade, the catalog showcased Lionel's newest and greatest, the state set. This top-of-the-line passenger set was unlike anything the company had made before. The cars were massive and beautifully detailed, completed with detailed interiors. The engine, the 381E, was a recreation of the Milwaukee Road's massive EP2 bipolar locomotive, and was one of the most detailed engines Lionel had released to that point. Fortunately, the nation did not take the same course as the Lionel line. In October 1929, the stock market collapsed. The nation began to slide into the Great Depression, one of the worst economic disasters in the nation's history. By 1931, 15% of the nation was without work, and the situation was only getting worse. And Lionel's catalog seemed to reflect this. Gone were the colorful images of Lionel standard gauge products. These catalog covers were replaced with dark, gritty, realistic images of real railroads. As the Great Depression worsened, so did Lionel's economic situation. By 1934, Lionel entered receivership. The problem was many had little to no disposable income, especially not for the large standard gauge trains. Lionel quickly made changes to rectify this. 1934 catalog showcased Lionel's newest innovations in model railroading, but these models were part of the economical O-gauge line. The 1930s had proven that standard gauge's time had come. They were too big and too expensive for most. Going forward, Lionel was all in for O-gauge. The cover showed the 792E, a near-scale recreation of the Union Pacific's brand new state-of-the-art diesel streamliner. The model was made using plans provided by Union Pacific and EMD. Also around this time, Lionel began to publish the Lionel magazine, available for members of the Lionel Engineering Club. This magazine was full of toy train and real railroading, as well as showcasing the company's newest and greatest. Another move that brought Lionel out of the Depression was a skillful partnership with the Walt Disney Corporation, whose animated cartoons were quickly becoming a national icon. Lionel saw this opportunity and brought out a full line of inexpensive Disney-themed hand cars, engines, and rolling stock. The most famous of these was the Mickey Mouse hand car. Introduced in 1934, it's credited at being what brought Lionel out of receivership. Pressed at only $1, it was cheap enough for most Depression-era families, and by some estimates, Lionel sold over a million. Lionel's catalogs continue to reflect this shift towards the O-Gage line, showcasing tons of new O-Gage products, but the best was soon to come, and the 1936 catalog hinted at this. In 1937, Lionel introduced their newest project, something completely new for the company, a true 148 scale, highly detailed die-cast model of the New York Central's iconic Hudson locomotive. Lionel was truly proud of this achievement, as they would feature the engine on the catalog covers for the rest of the pre-war period. With the introduction of the scale Hudson, Lionel began to advertise to a new market, the growing scale modelers. These individuals were not interested in the colorful and unrealistic toy trains that many companies had produced prior. They sought to model real-life railroads in high details. Lionel realized the potential and began working to market towards these scale modelers. Lionel followed up their Hudson with a series of scale detailed switcher locomotives. Lionel also introduced a new gauge to market towards the newly emerging HO scale market. Lionel double O gauge line, Joshua Lionel Cohen chose double O over HO as the models were slightly larger, featured a fully detailed die cast 1 to 76 model of the Hudson, nearly identical to the 700D. The line also included scale detailed double O gauge rolling stock. Lionel continued to appeal to the emerging model railroad market by placing ads in newly emerging scale modeling magazines, such as Model Railroader and Scale Model Craftsman. Lionel also rebranded their magazine to Model Builder to reflect this growing involvement in the model railroading market. In 1940, Lionel cataloged its iconic standard gauge line for the last time. O scale was in full swing. But this development would be cut short. The United States would enter World War II in late 1941, and by 1942, the production of toy trains would cease. This Lionel pre war catalog, released in 1942, showcased the patriotic spirit, with the 700E imposed over the red, white, and blue of the American flag. Lionel would shift towards war production for World War II, producing equipment for military use. While Lionel's toy train production was on temporary hiatus as a result of the needs of wartime production, Lionel introduced a new product to appeal to those eager to get their hands on more Lionel trains. The Lionel wartime freight train set, introduced in 1943, was made completely of cardstock, paper, and some wood. The set was a unique way to navigate wartime manufacturing restrictions, but proved to be unpopular and far too complex for a child to assemble. Despite this, Lionel made a good effort to maintain its status as a household brand during wartime. World War II would come to an end in September 1945, and with that would usher in a new era of Lionel trains. Unable to fully revamp train production in time for the 1945 Christmas season, Lionel focused their efforts on producing one set. Lionel published a flyer to announce the company's return to train production to the world, as well as highlighting new features such as operating knuckle couplers and staple end trucks. Although relatively simple, this set would serve to hold over eager train fans until toy train production was in full swing. Lionel production would return in full in 1946, Lionel releasing a brand new, beautifully illustrated catalog showcasing Lionel's newest and best, 
engines like the 726 Berkshire and the 671 Turbine featured smoke, as well as new rolling stock showcasing Lionel's operating couplers and realistic trucks, and many new and unique operating accessories. Lionel also published the 1946 catalog in its entirety in the November issue of Liberty Magazine, just in time for Christmas season. Lionel's new product line and plentiful marketing quickly reestablished Lionel's presence in the toy train market. Through the 1940s, Lionel continued to publish catalogs and advertisements showcasing their new products. Lionel also advertised their trains in many new ways. Lionel released vinyl records featuring real railroad sounds, purchased radio advertisements, and got Joe DiMaggio of the New York Yankees baseball fame to endorse the Lionel product line. The Lionel catalog themselves began to develop during this time. The trains now occupied full landscapes instead of floating above blank backgrounds. The Lionel 1948 catalog would feature not only the introduction of Lionel's most iconic locomotive, but one of its most historic advertising blunders. Beautiful Santa Fe and New York Central EMD F3 locomotives would be introduced to the Lionel line, but the Santa Fe F3 was shown in a red and black color scheme, as opposed to the prototypical red and silver. Despite this, the Santa Fe Warbond F3 would quickly become the most iconic feature of the Lionel product line. Even the mistake in the 1948 catalog itself would become legendary. Being dubbed the Black Bonnet, this scheme would be produced on many model trains in the future. Lionel also showcased their products in person. Lionel sold many dealer displays, which helped Lionel dealers showcase new products. In 1949, Lionel constructed their most iconic display. The 1949 Lionel showroom layout was a massive, fully functional toy train layout located at Lionel showroom in New York City. This layout showed what could be possible with Lionel trains. In 1950, Lionel celebrated the 50th anniversary of the company and did so by bringing back a classic, the Scale Hudson. The 773 Hudson would be a reproduction of the original 1937-763 with the addition of modern Lionel features such as smoke. Other notable items included the collector-dubbed Anniversary Set, a Union Pacific passenger train pulled by two new diesel locomotives modeled after Alco's FA series engines. The 1950 catalog would also include the official release of Lionel's new Magna Traction feature. Magna Traction added magnets to the underside of Lionel locomotives, giving them increased grip to the rails. This feature would become the backbone of Lionel advertisement for the rest of the post-war period. Lionel constructed a special dealer display layout to showcase this. The D27 disappearing train layout showed the power of Lionel's magnet traction by having the engine pull a train through a steep helix located under a tunnel, hence the disappearing train. As the 1950s rolled on, Lionel entered its golden age. Lionel became the largest toy producer in the world, and profits reached $32 million. Lionel introduced many legendary products, such as the FM Trainmaster and 6464 series boxcars. But by 1956, Lionel profits began to decline, as the nation's interest shifted. Despite this, Lionel continued strong, advertising their products through a newly emerging national pastime, the television. In 1957, Lionel brought out Super O Trek, meant to replace the aging tubular Trek. Super O was realistic, with simulated wooden ties and a thin, hidden center rail. Many top-of-the-line sets in the catalog included this new track system. One of these sets was number 2296W, a Canadian Pacific passenger set. This set was one of several of Lionel's efforts to break into the Canadian market. Lionel also produced a special set for girls, complete with pastel collars and pink locomotive. In another effort to diversify the Lionel product line, Lionel introduced HO scale to the product line. Lionel contracted Riverasi to manufacture the trains. As the nation's interest changed, so did the Lionel product line. Lionel's 1958 catalog would showcase many space and military items in an effort to appeal to the new interest of the nation's youth. In 1959, Lionel capitalized on the emerging interest in Western movies and TV, as well as the release of Disney's widely popular film, The Great Locomotive Chase. Lionel released The General, a locomotive based on the classic 440 American type common to the 19th century. The engine was also paired with contemporary-styled rolling stock. In 1960, Lionel released a 23-minute promotional film, The Wonderful World of Trains. This film served to showcase Lionel's product line, all operating on a beautiful Super O layout. The film also featured some very creepy marionette characters. Through the 1960s, Lionel profits continued to decline, and Lionel tried everything to stay afloat. Lionel continued to move away from the traditional toy line, introducing products such as slot cars, science kits, and many other non-train items. Lionel's catalog showcased this shift. The 1965 catalog cover shows, in addition to trains, cars, a microscope, and a rocket. Lionel branding itself changed as well, with the company adopting the name Lionel Toy Corp. The 1960s proved to be difficult for American Flyer, Lionel's largest competitor. The company faltered, and Lionel purchased American Flyer in 1968. By 1969, the Lionel Corporation was a shell of its former self. The catalogs were simple and bare. 1969 would be the last year of train production by the Lionel Corporation. In 1970, Lionel's product line was sold to General Mills and would begin to be manufactured under the company's Fund Dimensions division. The return of the Lionel O-Scale line wasn't much at first. General Mills focused on producing affordable toy train sets, much less impressive than the products of Lionel's past. The Lionel catalogs were small, the hand-drawn images of the products were replaced by photographs, but by the mid-1970s, things began to improve. The 1976 catalog showcases this, complete with not only cheap toy train sets, but full of collector sets as well. This time period would show a shift in Lionel's marketing strategy to focus on family and memories, as well as targeting young hobbyists and the emerging Lionel collector's market.
Lionel also partnered with Johnny Cash, Cash being featured in several Lionel TV ads, as well as a TV special called Ride in the Rails. Lionel continued to produce new locomotives and rolling stock, featuring modern names such as Penn Central and Chessy System, as well as reviving post-war classics. Lionel continued to appeal towards collectors by bringing out special sets and series. One such was the Famous American Railroad series, five sets of various Famous American Railroad legends. Lionel continued to improve their product line and their catalogs. Full two-page spreads with dramatic lighting showcased these collector sets. Lionel also began to produce American Flyer trains, providing the long-deprived S-scale market with new products. 1986, the dynamic of Lionel shifted once again, when the line was purchased from General Mills by Richard Kuhn. Kuhn was a longtime Lionel train collector, and under his Lionel Trains, Inc., Lionel received the direction of a collector. The 1986 catalog brought back a Lionel classic, the Scale B6 Switcher, but this Switcher had a special feature, the newest innovation in model railroading, rail sounds. Lionel would soon bring out its first full-scale steam locomotive since the 700E, a true-to-scale model of the Reading's T1 steam locomotive number 2100. The engine featured rail sounds and was a revolutionary model. Lionel, under Kuhn's direction, continued to innovate, as well as beginning to focus on scale locomotives and rolling stock. In 1994, Lionel would release its most advanced technology yet. Developed by Lionel and partnered with musician Neil Young, Trainmaster Command Control brought Lionel locomotive control and features to new levels. Now engines could be controlled remotely, Bell and Whistle activated at the push of a button, plus a lieu of many other features. TMCC first premiered on board Lionel CNO Yellow Belly Scale Streamlined Hudson. The 1996 Lionel Corporation catalog showed an interesting development in Lionel advertisement. 100% of the catalog images were hand illustrated, a long callback to the catalogs of days past. Through the rest of the 90s, Lionel catalogs continued to showcase new products through a mix of illustrated art and photographs. Lionel also produced many special flyers highlighting specific items. The soon coming turn of the century would bring a big celebration for Lionel, the company's 100th anniversary. To celebrate the occasion, Lionel introduced the Century Club, five post-war inspired locomotives up to date with TMCC and rail sounds. In 1999, Lionel published its official website to the internet, allowing hobbyists to view and purchase new products easier than ever before. In 2000, the Lionel catalog was packed full of state-of-the-art scale engines and traditional classics to celebrate the company's centennial. That same year, Lionel introduced a new product line, the Joshua Lionel Cohen series. This series would bring out many new scale locomotives and represent Lionel's best. The 2000s showed a new era for O-Scale, as Lionel among competitors such as K-Line Atlas and MTH produced highly detailed full-scale model trains. 2006, Lionel's newest JLC locomotive, the legendary Big Boy, contained the next evolution in Lionel control, Legacy. The Legacy system was a step up from the aging TMCC system and was filled with impressive new features. The Lionel catalog would receive a dramatic, stylized, and modern look in 2009, coinciding with the introduction of the Vision line. Lionel's state-of-the-art product line, pushing the boundaries of what is possible in O-Scale. And now, the Lionel catalog formula had taken form as to what it is today. The front of the catalog filled with legacy scale steam locomotives, then diesel locomotives, followed by top-of-the-line sets and rolling stock, and lastly, traditional product and other miscellaneous items. The Lionel catalog was also published on a regular routine, Volume 1 in January, Volume 2 in July, as well as other supplemental catalogs such as Ready to Run, American Flyer, and Christmas catalogs. Lionel, in an attempt to appeal to the growing mobile and handheld gaming markets, produced video games such as Lionel Train Town and Lionel Battle Train. These games serve to continue to expose young children to the Lionel name. In 2012, Lionel created their official YouTube channel. During this period, YouTube began to develop as one of the best ways for Lionel's new products to be shown. YouTube would rise as one of the driving forces of exposure for the hobby. In 2014, the Lionel catalog would change to show the company's shift to a built-to-order scheme. This served to ensure the Lionel products would only produce as many trains as needed and did not have to waste money on immovable inventory. The Lionel catalog would change for one final time in 2018. Lionel swimmed down the catalog process to just two catalogs a year, the January Big Book and the July Volume 2, the way it remains today. Lionel's 124-year legacy was built on the company's catalogs, advertising, and image. The company rose to prominence as a result of Joshua Lionel Cohen's genius marketing and maintained its status as an icon through the trains on the track and the pages in its catalog. I hope you guys enjoyed that video, taking a look through the history of Lionel's catalogs and marketing. Um, if you did enjoy it, please consider liking the video, leaving a comment on it. And if you want to see more train videos, check out my channel and subscribe. Thanks.